What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update for Sunday, March 24th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Want to stay informed? Just subscribe to my channel down below. Give this a thumbs up if you like the content that you see. Leave any comments you have down below. And of course, share this with anyone you know. All right, just a couple news stories we're going to talk about today. Then we are going to take a look at some data, including wastewater data. We're going to look at a lot of wastewater sites today. Why? Because, well, it's Sunday. And that's one thing that we do like to do on Sundays when there's not much data out. We pretty much go through a whole bunch of wastewater sites around the U.S., seeing what the COVID levels and other virus levels are at. All right, our first news story today. Sick people leaving workforce at record highs. Yes, this is not good. What could have happened in the past few years? Well, let's read on. The number of people leaving the workforce due to long-term sickness is at its highest since 1990, a report suggests. Well, we do know back in 2020, the COVID pandemic started. With the COVID pandemic also came long COVID. You know, those people who did not fully recover from COVID or started having new issues post-COVID. That could be a big factor as to why there are so many people starting to leave the uh, workforce. And this, primarily, this article is from the BBC, so this primarily uh, goes towards the UK, but if I had to uh, guess, if I had some data on the US, we would probably see a big increase in the US as well. Taking a look at this now, a Vietnam student has died from H5N1. It was someone who was 21 years old. They were a diabetic patient, and they died of H5N1, which is a version of the avian influenza, and he died after many days on a ventilator. So that is not good to see. All right, moving on to this now. We do have something for this day in history. On March 24th of 2022, data from the Census Bureau shows that deaths in the U.S. between 2019 and 2020 increased by approximately 19% after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in March of 2020. This is the biggest spike in mortality in the U.S. in 100 years. So you can see, back when the pandemic first started, there was a huge increase in the number of deaths, 19% increase between 19... 2019 and 2020. That's pretty significant. Let's take a look at the air quality values in the U.S. as this refreshes, as it loads. We had a cleansing of the atmosphere in the Northeast. Yes, you're seeing a few sites that are bad, but for the most part, the East Coast is not doing all that bad. Where we do see some bad air qualities is portions of Texas, right on through the plains, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, even Iowa. Look at Denver. Wow, what's going on in Denver, Colorado? Really bad air quality is there today, so not good in the plains, and that even continues up into Minnesota. Slightly bad air quality in Chicago today, and the West Coast, just our usual spots that are usually have bad air quality, continue to do so today. And down on the Gulf Coast, look at this, Florida, Louisiana, slightly bad today. Not terrible, but slightly bad today. All right, moving on now, taking a look at what's going on in my area, Philadelphia. EMS incidents. 682 EMS incidents have been reported yesterday, so uh, that's well below 700, so that's a good total. Taking a look at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Cardiac emergency, unconscious subject, dizziness, and multiple head injuries, dizziness again, and then comes cardiac emergency and subject in pain, so not terribly busy right now. And over in Chester County, we see seizures, respiratory difficulty, heart problems, respiratory difficulty, back pain, someone's having a stroke, and a sick person in West Grove Borough. Alrighty, moving on now to Walgreens for this week. 15.4% positivity, that is down from the previous week. Now we come to the start of wastewater, but we're also going to look at something else. As a matter of fact, I think we should do that first and then come back to wastewater. We want to take a look at hospital capacity in a few um, different states. 
So let's first take a look at the national level, then we'll take a look at a few different states. Maybe we'll do about four states. And nationally, not doing uh, terrible, but we could be doing better. 76.1% of all beds are in use. 1.5% of that is for COVID. 0.9% is for influenza. Taking a look at ICU usage, we see that 71.1% of all beds are being used. COVID-19 makes up 1.5% of them. Influenza is at 1%. So that's ICU usage. We want to come down and check on Rhode Island. Rhode Island always seems to be low on capacity. Now, they did drop a little bit last week, but eh, that went back up again for ICU usage. 85.8% .8 of all ICU beds are being used in the state of Rhode Island. 0.4% are for COVID. 3.4% are for influenza. And I always constantly say this, Rhode Island needs another hospital somewhere to solve this capacity issue. Maybe they lost the hospital. I don't know. If you know what's going on, why there was always such short capacity in Rhode Island, let me know down below. I mean, you can see here, historically, they just constantly are over for inpatient bed uses, over 80%, which that's a lot of beds being used. And currently, it's at 87.9%. 0.7% of that's for COVID. 2.4% of that's for influenza. Hopefully, when influenza finally you know, comes down for the season in this area. Hopefully that can help the hospital bed capacity a little bit. So, yeah, that's uh, not good to see. Now we want to take a look at what is going on in the state of Ohio. Remember, Ohio had a pretty significant wave of influenza recently. So let's see what's going on with that. And look at this, not too bad. 73.8% of all beds are being used. 1% is for COVID-19. 1.2% is for influenza. And how's the ICU situation? ICU beds, look at that, not terrible at all. 68.5% are being used. 1.1% for COVID. 1.2% is for influenza. You know what would be really interesting? If we could see nationally and in all states how this compares to before the pandemic started. I think that would be just really interesting to see uh, how that would uh, fare out. All right, next we want to take a look on the West Coast at California. ICU usage, it went up a little bit. 67.6% .6 this week, 1.1% for COVID-19, 0.2% for influenza. Taking a look at inpatient bed usage, and we see that is at 78.2%. COVID-19 is at 1.4%, and influenza is at 0.3%. It's spring break season, so let's see what Florida is up to right now. For inpatient bed usage, 77.1%. COVID-19 is at 1.4% of the beds being used. And 0.7% is for influenza. And how much ICU beds are being used? That would be 73.7%. And COVID-19 is at 2%. And influenza is at 0.6%. All right. Now going back to Biobot. Now taking a look at wastewater. And you can see nationally, Biobot. The wastewater, it was dropping, but now it's risen ever so slowly. A little bit of a bump in the road, and that is because of what is going on in the Midwest. Again, I think that could get corrected downward, but I will just have to wait and see. The Northeast, the South, the West Coast, all continuing to drop at this time. Though, be it they're not dropping as fast, they do continue to drop. Again, the Midwest is having that slight increase at this time. Now, when we take a look at the nationwide level, from wastewater scan, we see nationally everything has been dropping for COVID since about the start of January to end of December of last year. RSV continues to drop. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B is now really starting to drop. Uh, HMPV, that was starting to drop a little bit. Norovirus is also finally starting to show signs of a drop. And then when we come down here to Anything else now? They don't show Mpox or anything like that on the national level. Okay, I thought we were going to see hepatitis and Mpox, but we can't check that there. All right, let's start off in the Northeast and make our way around the country. We'll also take a look at some of the CDC wastewater sites as well. And I sus suspect that we should start off in Boston. We've been watching a little bit of a rise in Boston. Let's see if that's still the case. Nope, they have now corrected Boston. So it rose a little bit to start in March, but now it's starting to drop once again, which is something good. That's something we like to see for COVID. So dropping in Boston. Taking a look at RSV, that is also dropping a little bit. Influenza A, it's not really going up that much. It's really flattening out this time. Influenza B is dropping, and norovirus is finally really starting to drop off at this time. Mpox, not much of an issue at this time. Not seeing any detections of that. And hepatitis A, 
we have to go back all the way back to January to see detections of that. Alrighty, continuing on, let's go up a little bit further to the north. Let's see what's going on in Montpelier, Vermont. Haven't looked at that in a while. COVID is really low at this time. RSV is also low. Maybe a slight rise, but not much. Influenza A is trending downward. Influenza B has really gone downward. I don't even know why it is still listed as high. HMPV is dropping. Norovirus is slowly starting to drop. No detections of MPOX. There were some detections of hepatitis A way back earlier in the season. All right, coming down now to New Jersey. We want to check a big um, wastewater site. This is up in Newark, New Jersey. And look at this. This is, I mean, this is big. 1.5 million population. You can see low levels of COVID at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B is dropping. HMPV is only rising slightly. And then norovirus is still seeing a slight rise at this time. And let's see. Hepatitis A, the most recent detection. You have to go back to... I believe it's January to see the most recent detection for that. So, yes, not a lot of uh, detections recently of hepatitis A and no MPOX at this time. All right, continuing southward, let's come down to Washington, D.C. now. Let's see what's going on there. And we see in Washington, D.C. that at this time for COVID, it's medium. It's dropping, though. I think this will probably be changed to low pretty soon. Same with RSV. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B still choppy a little bit. It's not really dropping all that fast. And when we take a look at the CDC flu numbers, we could do that real quickly. You can see here, District of Columbia, it's still listed as very high in the Washington, D.C. area. MPOX at this time, no issues. And then we come down here to hepatitis A, and none of the uh, detections are recent detections. All right, let's go all the way down to the south of Florida now. Then we'll go out to the west a little bit. Then we'll switch over to the CDC wastewater page. And let's go to northwest Orange County, Florida, and see what's going on there. We can see COVID is medium at this time. It was starting to rise a little bit again. RSV, no issues. Influenza A, is dropped. Influenza B. Hmm, what's going on here? The trajectory is starting to go up a little bit. That's not good to see. Same with norovirus. Ever so slight rise for that. And no detections of MPOX at this time. And the most recent detection of hepatitis A goes back to January, which seems to be the theme on the majority of these wastewater sites. All right, let's come down close to the Houston area. We'll just go a little bit northwest of Houston to Woodlands, Texas, and we can see COVID. It's dropping at this time. RSV, no issues. Influenza A, no issues. Influenza B, it's rising just a little bit. Still, there's still detections of it ongoing, so it's still a round. MPOX is low at this time. Hepatitis A, no recent detections. All those are, again, going back to January. Now let's make our way out to the West Coast, and we'll come down here to California. Yesterday we did the eastern portion of California. Let's do the central portion of Los Angeles County today. We did the eastern L.A. yesterday. We'll do central L.A. today, and wow, this is one of those cases where the charts really zoomed out and slow, but hey, COVID is low at this time. RSV is rather low at this time. Influenza. Not many detections of that. And it is coming up high for influenza B. I honestly don't know why. Six. Six pathogens. That's not high. Norovirus is not doing too bad at this time. And everything else is pretty good. When more these hepatitis detections. Uh, some of them do go back to February. So a little bit closer in time. But that's pretty far out. Now let's go over to the CDC wastewater page and what you will see here is a whole bunch of different colors we have whites that's new sites that's 75 of them we also have gray we don't have to count for how many gray sites there are gray means that there's no data collected zero to 19 percent that's the really low levels of COVID that's in the blue 200 of them uh 20 to 39 percent that's a medium shade of blue 463 of them and then when we come to the light shade of blue, 40 to 59 percent, 366 sites. And then when orange is 158, that's 60 to 79 percent COVID detected. And there are still some red sites, some really high sites. That's 80 to 100 percent COVID detected. There's 22 of them. And you can see what we are seeing this week is a lot more blues are showing up in the Northeast. That's a good thing. That means levels are coming down. Still have some work to do down here in Virginia and North Carolina. A lot of oranges still being detected. Some blues, some, some of the lighter shades of blue, but we want to see more dark shades of blue. And we're just not seeing that yet. Florida, not doing bad. Louisiana, hmm. 
What's going on with you? We're seeing a lot of oranges. We're still seeing reds. I think you have still the highest number of reds still. But look at this. Some of these red sites, number one, they may not be updating frequently. Number two, if they are, yeah, they are starting to drop. This one, though, is rising. But look at that. It just went straight. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of seems off to me. The CDC data, I mean, they really need to get with the ball here. Yeah, I'm just clicking on these red sites just to try and get an idea of what's going on. A lot of this data is not updating that frequently. So, yeah, Louisiana is suspect at this time that you still have that much transmission going on. West Coast, not doing too bad. Seeing a lot of blues. Let's go up to the Midwest, the Great Lakes region, because we have not yet. Come on. Here we go. And let's see. I still see an orange site. Is that the big Cook County site? Yes, it is. 1.1 million population, but we're seeing a drop at this time pretty steadily. It'll probably turn into a bluer shade on the next update, should that continue. We're still seeing a lot of the light shades of blue. We want to see the dark shades of blue come around. And eventually they will come around as things continue to drop. You can see a Kendall, smaller wastewater site, but it is dropping. And we are starting to see some more darker shades of blue show up in the state of Michigan. Ohio is doing a lot better. Just about a month ago, Ohio was covered with red and orange sites. And now there's a lot of light blue sites and probably some medium shade sites. Well, we can see this. There's some medium shade sites. But probably what I'm trying to say is the darker blues, they're going to be coming pretty soon should things continue to drop. Take a look at this. We're seeing here. This, now, this site here, Licking, that's eh, a small site, but it is starting to uh, level off. Franklin, that's bigger area. That's Columbus, Ohio. That's still dropping. How about Hamilton? Uh, here's Butler. Can we find Hamilton? Yeah, Hamilton is going straight down. So that's going to go to a lighter shade of, or darker shade of blue relatively soon. Back to Illinois. Randolph, Illinois. What's going on with you? You are rising. That's uh, Royal County in Illinois. That's not good to see. Now taking a look at Kansas. We can see we have one red site here that is flat at this time. Then there is Reno, Kansas. And that is dropping at this time. It is in a moderate shade. And let's go north. What's going on in Minnesota? We can see here, not bad in Minnesota. We're starting to even see some darker shades of blue show up for you. And how about the Pacific Northwest? You can see here, look at this. A lot of darker shades of blue showing up, meaning lower COVID levels at this time. That is good to see. One orange site, Lincoln County. And this is in Oregon. And that is actually rising at this time. So that is not good to see. And let's go back to the south. Can't do much in Texas. Uh, Tennessee, still some orange sites. Again, got all these orange sites in North Carolina. Georgia still has some orange. So there's still some work to be done in a lot of places. But the overall theme in the United States, not just for COVID, for all viruses, is things are starting to improve. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another one again in the near future. I don't know if there'll be a Monday edition this week or not. We'll have to see. Um... Uh, I'll see you all again next time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. If you know anyone who needs to see this content, by all means, share this with them. And leave your comments down below. I always love reading your comments. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. Thanks for watching.